Hi, my name is Grace and I'm an interpreter here and welcome to Lindbergh 101. This is presented by the Charles Lindbergh House and Museum from Little Falls, Minnesota as part of the Minnesota Historical Society. Today, we'll be talking about Charles Lindbergh's life as an aviator, scientist, Pulitzer Prize winning author, isolationist, and environmentalist. Charles Augustus Lindbergh was born on February 4th, 1902 to Charles Augustus Lindbergh, often called CA, in Evangeline Lodge Land. C.A. was a lawyer who was working for the Pine Tree Lumber Company in Little Falls. He was also a recent widower whose two daughters were away at boarding school. Meanwhile, he was staying at the Antlers Hotel in Little Falls. Also staying at the Antlers Hotel was a beautiful young school teacher by the name of Evangeline Lodge Land, who had moved from Detroit to Little Falls in search of adventure. Like many of these stories go, they ended up falling in love. They were married in 1901. When they married, C.A. gave Evangeline the option of either a house in town or he could build her dream house on the banks of the Mississippi. And of course, she chose the dream house. Unfortunately, that house burnt down when Charles was just three years old. The house that is still standing now is the one that Charles grew up in. Charles viewed that as going to camp or visiting the cabin, like we say around here, because for a majority of his childhood, his father was a congressman and they spent a majority of the year in Washington, D.C. In his teenage years, his father was no longer involved in politics, so this became their home year-round. And at that time, he was working on the farm, particularly during World War I, where instead of joining the army like he wanted to, he instead worked on the farm as part of the Boys Working Reserve Program. Charles continued living in Little Falls until he graduated high school, where he then went off to Wisconsin. Eventually, he enlisted in flight school in Nebraska and began barnstorming. He did a thing that was referred to as wing-walking, where he and another pilot would go up into the air. Charles would then go out to the end of the wing, wave to the crowd below, and then jump off the plane. But of course, he always landed safely because he had a parachute. Eventually, he joined the Army and partook in flying school in San Antonio, Texas, and eventually began flying airmail for the Robertson Aircraft Corporation out of St. Louis. At times, he had to do crash landings, but he always made sure that the mail landed on time. He pioneered the route from Chicago to St. Louis, and it was during that time that he heard about the Ortigue Prize. Raymond Ortigue was a wealthy businessman who believed in the power of aviation, and was offering $25,000 to any pilots who could make a non-stop flight from New York to Paris, or Paris to New York. And Charles figured he could do that. At first, no one wanted to fund this journey because Charles was a solo, relatively inexperienced pilot. But eventually, a group of businessmen from St. Louis offered to fund the building of his experimental aircraft, which he then, of course, called the Spirit of St. Louis. Charles took off from New York on May 20th, 1927, and for 33 and a half hours, he was alone in the air, eventually landing safely in Le Bourget, Paris, proving that aviation could be safe. After this, he ran a promotional tour throughout the world talking about aviation. It was during this promotional tour that he met the Mexican ambassador's daughter, Anne Morrow. They had a short courtship and were married on May 27th, 1929. Anne was an accomplished aviator in her own respects, but she was also an author. On March 1st, 1932, their first child, Charlie Jr., was taken from their home in Hopewell, New Jersey. At this time during the Great Depression, kidnappings were incredibly common, with the idea that you would pay the ransom and get your loved one back. They paid the ransom, but unfortunately, Charlie's body was found two weeks later in a ditch near their home. Eventually, German immigrant Bruno Richard Hauptmann was arrested, convicted, and executed for this crime. Due to threats on Charles and Anne's surviving son, the family moved to England. It was during this time that Charles got involved with the U.S. consulate to Germany, who invited him over to inspect German aircraft factories. It was then that Charles really got enamored with the German people and their aircraft power. But seeing signs of war growing in Europe, Charles moved his family back to America, where he got involved with the America First movement. This was a movement that ranged from isolationists who simply didn't want America to get involved with the war, to some who wished a Nazi victory. Charles was a proponent for America not getting involved in the affairs of Europe. One of his most prominent speeches was entitled, Who are the War Agitators? Where he specifically blamed the British, the Roosevelt administration, and the Jews for getting involved in the war in Europe. Almost immediately, the public opinion on Charles swayed, and he quickly stopped being involved with the America First movement. After Pearl Harbor, Charles wanted to get involved with the war and enlist. However, due to his work with America First, FDR would not allow him. So instead, he worked with the US Army Air Force in the Pacific Theater as a citizen advisor. After the war, Charles did advocacy work for environmentalism. He traveled to Europe, South America, and the Middle East and the Pacific Islands. He also worked with the World Wildlife Foundation and Nixon's Citizen Advisory Committee. In a published article in Reader's Digest, he said, if I had to choose, I would rather have birds than airplanes. 
Charles passed away in 1974 at the family home in Maui. Special thanks to the Laura Jane Musser Fund for making this and other educational videos possible. If you enjoyed this presentation, please come visit us at the Charles Lindbergh House and Museum.